You guys are watching the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. But what you might not know is that we also have here at Chat Sports a channel devoted only to the NFL, the NBA, and all of the major sports. So if you want NFL coverage every single day, multiple times a day, go subscribe to the Chat Sports YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the comment section in the description. And join me tonight. We'll be live for the USFL draft, having some fun, and probably getting at least a little bit drunk during that live draft. This is the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey here as always, and today's video includes some news and rumors out there around America's team, beginning with the franchise tag, because the deadline for NFL, or excuse me, the window for NFL teams to apply the franchise tag opens today. It ends March 8th. Will the Cowboys use the tag this year? Two names mentioned by ESPN, the first being Dalton Schultz. He also listed Randy Gregory did Todd Archer. Now, Schultz's projected tag here checks in just under $11 million. As we'll break down more in depth here in a little bit, I could see him getting more than that on the open market. That does make Schultz a pretty realistic and logical franchise tag candidate. The other name is Randy Gregory. We won't spend as much time on Gregory today because, well, the projected tag is just under or just around $20 million, which makes that a bit unlikely as far as I'm concerned. Look, the Cowboys want to keep Gregory a 20-ish million dollar tag, even for one of the team's top free agents. Probably a bit too much. There are several players who are notable free agents of the Cowboys that we've broken down before on the channel. Some names that we will kind of discuss as potential tag candidates. Michael Gallup, Dalton Schultz, Randy Gregory, J. Ron Curse, and I'll at least mention kind of ones are not going to tag him. Franchise tag cost for Gregory is projected per over the cap over twenty million. Yeah, cross that one off. Michael Gallup, nineteen million. Nope, not going to do that one. Connor Williams, hell no, at sixteen point seven million. J. Ron Curse at thirteen point five four ish. That's doable to an extent, and. The one that I do think makes the most sense, Dalton Schultz, projected by over the cap at 10.8. That number will ebb and flow as other deals get done, but that's about what you're looking for for the franchise tag cost. So even if you have Randy Gregory as this team's number one free agent, I don't think a franchise tag makes a lot of sense for him. Speaking of top free agents, who do you think is the number one guy the Dallas Cowboys need to find a way to keep this year? Who is their top free agent? This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, well then take advantage of it. Head down to the pinned comment while the ad plays and drop a name for me. I do like Randy Gregory a lot. I would be pretty shocked and frankly angry if the Cowboys franchise tagged him. You don't franchise tag a guy coming off a career best year of six sacks. That's not that's not good business. Now, if the franchise tag was like 10, what it is for Schultz, I would probably tag Gregory. It's not. It's not how the contracts work. Schultz, meanwhile, is coming off a career best year. And if I had told you Dalton Schultz went for 800 yards and eight touchdowns, you'd be pretty excited. He's also not nearly as bad of a blocker as some out there seem to think. Issues in space when blocking. In line, he's just fine. And that 10.83, we'll call it 11, we'll round it up, million dollar tag. I think Schultz can beat on the open market with the salary cap going up. Look, he's not going to command George Kittle money. He's been more productive than Dallas Goddard's been over his NFL career, though, of course, I'm a still a big Dallas Goddard fan. Not as productive as Mark Andrews, but the numbers to watch here. Hunter Henry and John U. Smith, they were had more hype than Dalton Schultz when they got paid, but $12.5 million, if you're a team like the Jets, for example, desperately trying to find anything resembling competent play at tight end, I, I could see them throwing $13 million at Schultz on the open market. At minimum, I think he's going to pass the Austin Hooper contract. So if the Cowboys really want to keep Dalton Schultz, tag does make sense. It would require them to make a decision with Amari Cooper in the very near future. Restructure guys like 
Dak Prescott and possibly for other men. Because you're going to tag somebody, you have to have that salary cap space available and there's nothing you can do from a flexibility standpoint with that deal in terms of adding fake years or putting money onto the back end. The other name I'll mention, but we'll come back to this name in a little bit with some more conversation on him, is J. Ron Curse. I don't mind the idea of tagging him. It's a little bit expensive, but I think Curse was the most impressive player this year relative to my own expectations for the Dallas Cowboys. So what do you think? Will the Cowboys use the franchise tag this year. Type in Y for yes or type in N for no. Sound off for me in the comment section. And while you're down there, make sure you go subscribe to our Chat Sports YouTube channel. We will be live. I will be along with producer Trace and producer Brett for the USFL draft. Day one of a draft that we have no idea who's actually in the draft. So it'll be fun. We'll, in, in the words of a famous broadcaster, F it. We'll do it live. Go subscribe to our Chat Sports YouTube channel for the USFL draft and, of course, the actual NFL draft, the one you might care about a little bit more. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Let's spend some more time now, as promised, on J. Ron Curse. He recently spoke with, or should say today spoke, with 105 through the fan, talked about Dan Quinn, the impact there, and I just wonder. Uh, it, it sounded like a player who at least wants to return. I'm not going to give this like a four-star thing. I think it's at least two, though, given Curse's comments, but I'll make this point, too. This is Curse's first chance at an actual big NFL run. He's been playing on vet men, rookie deals. He's never gotten paid in a big way. He could get a couple million per year at minimum this offseason. But here's what Curse said. Getting Dan Quinn back was a huge win. And it was a much needed just to, just to try your best to keep this group together. Because the strides we made in year one, it can give us a lot of upside going into year two with guys being together. That sounds like someone who is planning on re-signing. Now, it does require him getting a good offer from the Cowboys, but I was so impressed by what Curse did this season. I thought he was going to be a roster bubble candidate. In the end, he was the best safety on the team. He was the afterthought when DeMonte Casey signed. Turns out Curse was the best one of that bunch. So I do want to keep him. We'll see how much he gets because he is a bit of a one-year wonder. His value is is iffy. I think having Dan Quinn back is a big deal for, for Curse. And if the money's similar, I think he ends up back in Dallas. But what do you guys think here? Will Curse re-sign with the Dallas Cowboys? Make your predictions for me right now in the comments section. Type in A for yes, he will, or B for, for no, he's going to go chase the bag elsewhere. Get those votes in for me in the comments. And, oh, look, Ezekiel Elliott trade is back. And Mike Fisher, correctly, by the way, uh, put on an article saying the Cowboys are not going to trade away Zeke. Many of the same things that we'd mentioned before, but when the big media people do it, I feel the need to mention it once again since it's just, and eh, not everyone watches every show. It's all good. I get it. I get it. Everyone's got stuff going on, especially in, in an off season. Elliott is not going to get traded. His contract basically makes that impossible. But his long-term future is up in the air, and I would wonder if maybe you give more Tony Pollard chances this year, which we'll come back to. First, again, a breakdown of the contract. His cap hit this year is a yikes $18.22 million. That's horrible. I mean, you could you could restructure the, the DAC contract and make it a similar cap hit. And that's your quarterback, not your running back. Cut him right now. You incur an additional $11.86 million, so you'd be paying over $30 million on the cap this year. You're not going to cut him. After June 1st, you could jail and smith him, but you wouldn't have access to that money at all, and you're still eating a bunch of dead money next year, so it, it, a cut's just not going to happen. A trade would save you a little bit this or right now. The only time it makes sense, really, it would be after June 1st, and you can't designate a person June 1st or post-June 1st, so you have to wait till after the draft, then trade him. Still, you would save some money. You could pay your draft class, etc., carry that money over, but you're still going to eat dead money next year, and you're also not going to pick this year, and it requires a team to want to take on Zeke's expensive cap hit. I don't see anyone doing that. So for this year, I think Zeke's back on your team. Next year... I'm not so sure because I would like to make Tony Pollard your lead quote unquote back. And if that's 51%, 49%, cool. I am on board with that. But I do not see the need to force Zeke when it's not working. It worked early in the year. 
and the stubborn uh, insistence on utilizing Zeke in a heavy workload down the stretch doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So there is uncertainty on the future of Elliott beyond this year. How many more years will Zeke be on the Cowboys? I hope he plays great this upcoming year. He's healthy, stays healthy, but the workload's a concern for me. So predict it. How many more years for Zeke on the Dallas Cowboys? Back to Pollard here. He was more efficient in a smaller role than Zeke Elliott was, but he offers you more in terms of explosive big plays. That is simply not Zeke's game anymore. Hasn't been for several years. It's okay. He does other things well. Zeke is a fantastic, one of the best in the NFL at pass protection in that uh, at that running back position. But Pollard's not horrible either, and he brings you more value as a pass catcher. Elliott as a pass catcher is is fine, but the big plays are not there. So if you want to make Zeke your like inside the twenty back, I get that. If you want to make Zeke your short yardage back, I get. It. You want to make him your closer. That's what I wanted to do this past year. Cowboys didn't quite make that happen. I think you have to give Pollard more reps because he has proven he's too dynamic to just sit on the bench getting next to nothing in the games that matter.